This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to be making a hydrangea waffle cone bouquet. It's broken down into steps so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. First off, we're going to make the colors for our little flower cone. So I'm using all American style buttercream. You can use whatever you like. And we're using three liquid gel colors. Violet, there we go, lemon yellow, and finally some royal blue. I've got a little bit of my violet and royal blue out on a little lid over here with some toothpicks because the first shade I'm going to make and the one I'm probably going to make the most of is a really light purple. So I just want to give myself some nice little specks of both my purple and my blue. And we'll give it a mix around and we're looking to make a nice kind of light periwinkle-esque shade. So I started out with kind of equal amounts. Probably do exactly what it's doing in there which is read a little blue. So then I'm going to want to just add some extra purple to it. just to take it towards the purple end of my spectrum because I want like a periwinkle purple and not a periwinkle blue. There we go. I think one more speck of purple is going to do it. It'll still be a nice light pastel color. It'll be a nice light shade of that periwinkle purple. Now let's make some darker purple. We're going to use this to stripe our bag. So I'm just going to start with some drops. Just two of that purple. And I'm just going to add a few specks, nice big ones of that royal blue. And you'll notice we don't really have much in there. So just a little bit of color should give us a nice darker shade. We're going to use this to stripe our bag with our light purple to create a nice effect for our flowers. Lovely. We need a color for the centers of our flowers and I want to make a nice kind of citrusy green. So I'm going to start out with some yellow, kind of like half a drop, just because we don't have very much in there. We don't really need a lot because we're just doing a few little dots and just a few small little specks of blue. I just want to make a nice shade of green that has that kind of citrusy lime vibe to it. So more yellow than blue, a little bit of intensity so it kind of pops against those pastel shades of purple that we made for our background. And I think that's going to do nicely as a little dot in the center of all of our flowers. Our final color today is going to be a darker green. So I want to start with some drops of blue, just three or four, and also some drops of lemon. We want to make a nice vibrant hue of green for our leaves. So we don't want this to be pastel. We want it to have some more intensity to it. And if I start with just kind of equal drops, a blue and green it should give me kind of a nice true green which you can see I've got there and I might just add a little more blue to it just to take it a little over to kind of that I want to call it maybe like a Kelly green so not too much that it becomes teal, but just a little bit. So in terms of the balance, we're just a little more blue than yellow in our green. I think that's going to be a beautiful shade along with the one that we made for the centers and our purples to really help our details pop. We're going to stripe our bag of purple for this project. So we thought really quickly we'd show that to you. I've got my 104 tip on my bag 
already lined up and I've actually lined it up with the seam of the bag just to give me a nice visual cue on the back. So I've lined up the seam with the top of the tip because that's where I want my dark color to be. So you wanna keep that in mind. You'll notice I folded the bag over halfway because I don't wanna fill it too much. You can always reload bags. The buttercream colors should behave pretty nicely for you. So that's not really a problem. So don't worry about getting too much in there worrying about getting it in the way you want it. So I've got that nice visual cue for myself, the seam, and that's where I want to put my dark purple. And you can see I've kind of already loaded it up on the back of an offset tapered spatula. And if I go like this, I can just take that and basically paint a nice little line for myself in a controlled way right on top of that seam. I'm not gonna worry if I get any on any of the sides of the bag or whatever. A few little specks here and there really isn't gonna make a difference. It's not gonna end your world, right? You just wanna have it so that that nice line of purple lines up with the top of that tip. The thicker you go, the more that dark purple will come out. The less you put on there, the skinnier the line on that edge will be. And you can play with that effect to really give yourself a nice varied look to your flowers. Now that I have that stripe of purple on there, I'm just gonna quickly grab a nice loaded up spatula of my light purple and just slide that down the other side. So it's gonna be really easy to just place that in there, hopefully not disturbing too much. And now you can see I've got color on one side, color on the other side. I can keep pushing more light purple down there. And one thing to note is I don't go all the way to the bottom, all the way to the tip. I wanna make sure I get the colors in there, get it nice packed down first, and then I'm gonna push the frosting forward so it meets the tip. That means if you got a little off on your orientation when you're putting things in there, you can always play with the tip and move it around a little bit so it lines up before you push everything forward. And that's gonna ensure that the color comes out the way you want it to. So this is a really easy way to stripe a bag. If you have trouble, holding on to it like I'm doing while you're loading things up, you can always fold the top over a nice little cup. So it's a nice opening for you. It'll keep the bag open and really make it easier on yourself. But we're ready to fold this up, push it forward and get going. For this project, we're gonna use three bags. We've got a bag with our purple that we showed you how to stripe. It's fitted with a coupler since we're gonna change tips. And we've got two fitted directly with the tips. They're all 12 inch disposable decorating bags. For our purple, we're gonna use a 104 and a number 12. For our light green, we're gonna use a number one. And finally, for our dark green, we'll be using a number 366. Let's talk about the techniques that we're gonna use for our hydrangea waffle cone. The first one, dots. We're gonna use our number one tip that we have on our bright or light green, and we're also going to use a number 12 tip. So anytime we're doing a dot, we wanna be up off the surface, holding that bag straight up and down, squeeze, let it connect, and then stop and swirl around. And that's gonna give us a nice little curve on top of our dot instead of a little Hershey kiss. So obviously the dot that we do with the 12 is gonna be much larger than the one we've made with our number one. We're gonna be making petals with our 104 tip, which is on our bag of purple. And we're gonna do that classic kind of teardrop style petal, but we're gonna do them very small and short. So it's gonna be a very quick motion. So think fat end is the center of our little petal, skinny end kind of up off the surface and just a quick little swoop, right? Just a quick little tight arc that ends right back where it starts is enough to give you those beautiful petals. And if you've striped your bag well, you can see you get a nice little dark stripe on the outside edge. And finally, we're gonna make some really nice, big fat leaves with our number 366. You're gonna use this one just like you would a 352, meaning we're gonna to touch the surface with one of our points, hold the bag at a nice 45 degree angle, but because we're doing big leaves for a hydrangea, we're gonna squeeze nice and fat and then just give it a nice slow wriggle. So just slide it back and forth as you pull away and you can see that's gonna build up beautiful lines for us that give it the look of veins on our leaf. So it's a great way to get beautiful, big, fat leaves that go with our flowers. 
let's talk about how we're going to use the techniques we just went over to create a beautiful hydrangea blossom. And if you want a more detailed explanation and a more thorough tutorial, we have a hydrangea flower tutorial in our flower series. So you can always skip over and check out that video as well if you're looking for some more detailed and intensive instruction. But let's talk just a little bit about it here too. We're going to take our bag with our purple, slip on that number 12 tip, and pipe ourselves a nice big mound. If it cracks a little on the surface or whatever, that's totally fine. We just want a nice big base to pipe a bunch of little flowers on. We'll change the tip to our 104 and we're gonna cover it in four petal flowers. And we're gonna do three of those teardrop petals kind of flat against the surface. And then I like to put the last one a little bit on its side. And that gives it a little bit of variation, a little bit of depth and nice natural motion. We're gonna fill in with four petal flowers and anywhere we have gaps, we can pipe a single petal, a three petal blossom, a two petal blossom, whatever works to fill up basically that entire mound. I like to go around first with the nice full four petal ones and then just fill anywhere I have spaces so I cover up that mound completely. Finally, we'll finish off our blossoms by putting a dot with that number one tip with that nice little light bright green we made right there in the center. And that should really set off all the individual flowers and help them stand out. We're gonna start piping our hydrangea blossom. So you can see I've got my bag with my purple, I have the number 12 tip on it, and I wanna start up off the surface, a little higher than I normally would for a dot because I really wanna give this room to expand. So nice, big, big dot, really let it go, really let it build up and give yourself a really nice big surface to work on. We've changed to our 104 tip. I made sure I'm lined up with my dark purple stripe with the skinny end of that tip so that I keep streaming out just the way I want to. So always take a second to check right there. And we're gonna start by piping some of our little four petal blossoms. So just real quick little strokes to get those petals. And you'll see them start to kind of appear and manifest. So I got three on there and I'm just going to pipe that last one so that it's at a nice little angle and has that kind of twisted feel to the petals that you get on little hydrangea blossoms. And I'm just gonna go around this mound and pipe those little four petal blossoms until I kind of run out of space. So just get in there in any angle that's comfortable for you. I'm kind of doing this so that you can see it. So I'm not really at an optimal angle for myself right now, but it doesn't take much to cover this up. And really quickly, that mound disappears, especially since it's the same color that we're using. And I just start putting on some smaller ones. So I've got a little bit of space on top. Looks like I can squish in three petals. Just go at whatever angle means you can get them in there without disturbing your flowers. So I just did them kind of straight up. And then I'm just gonna give myself a little visual check all the way around anywhere I need to. Squish in a petal or two just to make sure I've covered up that surface and the whole thing looks frilly and covered with petals. So our final step is to take our bag with our number one. It's the one with our bright green for our centers. And we're just going to go into the middle of all those little four petal blossoms and pipe a dot. So just change the angle of your bag so that you're oriented for each flower, spin it around, Check them all and make sure you just get a little dot in the center of each one. And then anywhere I have a grouping of petals, like there's kind of three up there, there's mush, like maybe they make a flower, put one in the middle there and it gives you the idea of one. And you can see this kind of starts to come to life. You look like you have these little clusters of blossoms. 
In addition to the nice big hydrangea blossom we did, we're gonna do some just single flowers flat on our nail. This gives us a little bit of extra material to play with when we're putting our cones together, and I'll probably need about two or three per cone. That's just an estimate I'm thinking. So I'm gonna pipe these the way I would a traditional flower. So I'm just gonna do my first three petals flat. So those nice, quick, short, little teardrop shaped petals. And then the last one, I'm gonna go upright, just like I did on my blossoms. And that gives me that nice, kind of like twisted look to those petals that you get on hydrangeas. I'm gonna finish them off quickly with a dot with my number one tip and my green, just to help bring them to life. And I'm making just a few of these to help fill in on my cone with a few little single blossoms, but they're also a great way to practice. If piping on that 3D mound, that big dot that we did, is a little difficult to begin with, try practicing some blossoms flat on your nail first and then move on to that. It makes a nice little practice session for these tiny little hydrangea blossoms that we pair together to create nice, beautiful clumps. We've got our chilled flowers out and we also have a cone prepared. If you haven't yet, you can watch our full tutorial on how to prepare the cones to get you to this step. It's really in depth and it's a nice watch if you're looking for a great way to prep and fill these cones for your decorations. For today, to get started, we're gonna use our bag of green which we haven't used yet, we're going to pull it out and we're gonna put a nice leaf over to one side where we're gonna put on our big clump of hydrangea blossoms. And we're also gonna give ourselves a little bit of extra frosting to help it attach. So I want that leaf to come out nice and wide and really give it a good wriggle to build it up out past. So you can just go really slow as you work to build really nice big leaves there. And then I'm just gonna give myself just a little squeeze. It doesn't have to be anything big. We're not gonna see it just to kind of help tilt and present this clump of hydrangeas forward towards our viewer. So towards the front of the cone, just gonna peel this off the paper and then just gently nest it in there. And you can see now you've got just a little bit of green peeking out from behind, showing through and that's absolutely perfect. So just make sure you've got that down on there, nice and secure. It's attached and connected to that frosting. And we're gonna go in and fill in with some other leaves. And I piped some extra blossoms. That way, if your clump doesn't take up the whole space, you can put on an extra one or two anywhere you need to. But really, you can even just fill up the back around all those spaces, give it a twist so it's a good spot for you to view and work from just to get your tip in there and really pull out. So you can see already looks gorgeous. If we need to or want to, we can put on a little single blossom, like it's got one coming off the sides. I think I'm just going to put in one of these. I'm just gonna use just a little bit of purple got that nice 104 tip on there so it's really skinny easy to wedge right down in there and I can use a small spatula just to place one on right there just make sure it connects with that frosting so that we stay in place and I'm just going to give myself a bit more of a leaf behind it just to make sure it's nice and secure. You can see that way we have just a little bit of extra detail on our hydrangea cone. Here we have our beautiful hydrangea blossom waffle cone, and we've done ours in purples, but hydrangeas come in all sorts of colors. So this is a great way to practice your hydrangeas and make something really fun and festive, especially for some of those summer occasions you might have coming up. That's all for this lesson. If you like this video, try checking out some of our other waffle cone tutorials or some of our flower series videos for some really in-depth instruction. If you have any comments for us, questions, ideas, or suggestions, we would love to hear from you in the comments section. 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.